Hey friends, my name is Yi, and you're watching Yi Mr. Easy. Welcome to a new video for IGCSE at Maths, and today we have linear law for rules and examples for linear law. And we'll look into questions only for linear law next lesson, but for now we'll look into the rules and example. And moving on, we have some basics for linear law. But before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. But anyways, here's some basics. So we all know the, fa uh, the most basic equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c, where y and x are both variables, and m and c are constant, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. So to turn it into linear law, we basically have to turn it from this, small y to big y, and small x, right here, to big x, and the m and c remain the same. So basically what this is that it's basically quite similar but the big Y can be anything like any variables and what as we see here Y, big Y and big X are variables and they are functions of X whereas M and C stay the same as constant. And variables can have either X or Y or both and constant or like M and C can have any variables. For example, y, big Y and big X could have any like variable function. For example, 1 over Y, A and root X, and the A is maybe like the function. So basically, Y and X, the big Y and big X could be any function with the variables X, N or Y. So it could be 1 over Y, X, Y, 1 over X, X, root Y, or anything else. But M and C as a constant, they are like constant, they can't have variables, so they could be 1 over A, mm, A, or like B, B, A, A, B, or so on. But it can't be like X, it can't be X. So that's incorrect if you put it as M or C. You can't have this. This is correct, and this is correct. So here's some examples. So linear law is useful when you have a quadratic, like a quadratic uh, equation. For example, when you have this y equals 2x squared plus 3, you want to turn this into a straight line. So basically this is a non-linear non, oops. This is a non-linear form. And you have to turn this non-linear linear equation into a linear equation. So what we could do is that to turn this into big Y, equals m x plus c it's already in the form of y equals mx plus c just substitute the small y by the big y like so and the x square by big x like so therefore the new equation would just be y equals 2 y big y equals 2 big x plus 3 where the big x is equal to x square and y big y equals to y and another example is that we have this uh, non-linear because that's, it, it's a degree of more or less than 1. And this non-linear can be made into a linear equation by substituting xy, let's just highlight this, as xy by big Y and root x by big X. So to rewrite it, you can substitute xy with like this and it will become y, big Y equals 2 big X plus 44. And that's a linear equation. And here's an example question for linear law, and we'll look into questions in the next lesson. So to, in a typical exam question, you're given an equation, a non-linear equation, a non-linear equation, like here, this, y equals pk to the power of root x, where p and k are constant. Number two, you have to rearrange the original equation to like get the form of big Y equals M big X plus C. And number three, you're given a table of values for X and Y, like the original value, X and Y. And lastly, you have to make a new table for the net, for like the new big Y and big X set of value. And basically you just, let's say you have this, right? You have Y, let's take this example, Y equals PK root X. If you rearrange, oops, it's a power, root X. And if you rearrange the equation, and I'll just do it quickly, you'll get log y equals log k root x plus 
log p. So now you have the new value for y equals m x plus c. And you can see that the new y is log y, and the new x, big x, is root x. Therefore, you have to make a new table of the x variable being root x and the y variable being log y. And use the core, like use the, the values from the original table as a guidance of what values you should put. So let's just put the, the first value right here, where x is 1, y is 1.80. But in a new set of values, you have to do root 1. Root 1 is just 1, so it'll be 1. And then for the corresponding big y value, which is log y, you have to do log 1.8, which is some value that I'm not really sure because I don't have my calculator with me. So it'll be like 1 and log 1.8. And number two, when x is 4, y is 2.7. So root 4 will be 2, so when this is 2, and then log 2.7, and so on and so on. And you can, you can plot like a new uh, graph, which is a straight line. And here are some examples to express y in terms of x or to turn non-linear to linear or linear to non-linear. So we have expressed y in terms of x. So we have this uh, equation, right? So this graph right here, where we have some points, and notice that the y value is x y, and the x value is x cube. So in this case, where 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 we have the y axis as x y, and the x axis as x cube, we call this graph like x y plotted against x cube. So we have let's find this gradient first. Gradient is five minus two over minus four minus minus 1, which is minus, uh, 3 over minus 3, which is minus 1. That's the first clue. So we have the big Y equals minus X plus C. Notice how I still remain a big because this is like Y, big Y, and this is big X. So we have to do a condition where X is minus 1, Y is 2 because that's one of the points over here. So it will be 2 equals 1 plus C. And therefore, c equals 1. That's number 2. So putting all of it together, you get y equals minus x plus 1. And you can't stop there. Let's just drop this out. And you can't stop there. Because remember how we have we like substituted the big y and big x by these values right here? We have to put this value back into the equation. So big y is xy as we know from the graph, and big X is X cubed. So we have to put the values back into the equation right here. So it'll be X Y equals minus X cubed plus one. And let's just highlight this, X Y, X Y, X Y, and X cubed right here. So we have to express Y in terms of X. So this is not Y. So basically just divide the whole thing by X. So the final answer is y equals minus x squared plus 1 over x. And number 2, make y the subject. So what you have to do is that you have to combine these, uh, this, the right hand side part. So it will be 1 over y equals minus 1 over 2x because this is times plus 2. So I would like to put the negative behind the positive so it will be 1 over y equals 2 minus 1 over 2x. So we to combine these two values right here, these two terms, to become one term. So we know that to turn 2 into a fraction, it's basically 2 over 1. 2 over 1. We just have to top the, the numerator and denominator to the bottom by 2x. So it will be 4x over 2x. So 4x over 2x. Because if you simplify, it will, be, it will get 2. Now you have to, this minus, a fraction minus, you just combine the fraction. 4x minus 1 over 2x. As so. And to find y, basically you have to do cross multiply, right? But in this case, because 1 over y, you can just reciprocate both sides to get the value of y. So if you do like 1 over this and 1 over this, you can just flip this around. Flip this around, become y. 
Therefore, y equals 2x over 4x minus 1. You can see how I flip 1 over y around because I do I did 1 over 1 over y, so it will get us y. And if I do 1 over something on the left hand side, I have to do 1 over something on the right hand side as well. So it will be 1 over 4x minus 1 over 2x. You flip it around to get 2x over 4x minus 1. And moving on, we have turned the equation into a linear form where we have x, y, this, and this. So we can spot straight away that we can just type, we have this y already. We have this x, uh, we have, sorry, we have this m kind of of a, and the big x, we, it could be, we could be like x minus y plus c. So we're just missing the c part. So what I can do is that I can just times a by b to get the c, and the a remains as a factor of x minus y, so that a can be the gradient. So what I mean is that it can be x, y equals a x minus y plus a times b, like so. So then that's basically the final answer because if you rewrite it, it becomes x, y equals a x minus y plus a, b. This is basically y equals m x plus c. And then we have turned the equation into a linear form because this is non-linear. So what I can do is that I can just times both sides by ax plus b to get rid of the denominator. So it'll be y equals a, uh, x over ax plus b. It become axy plus by equals x. So what I can do is that I can divide both sides by y. Like divide everything by y, ax plus b over x over y and we basically have the final answer because if you rearrange this to see it clearer it will be x over y equals ax plus b which is y equals m x plus c where y is x over y uh, the big y is x over y m is a big x is just x and c is b And lastly, we have this uh, question, turn this into a linear form from a non-linear. So what I, can just, what, I can, what I can do is that I can times all of the values by x. So y equals a over x uh, plus b root x. You can times all of it by x, x. So it'll be xy equals a plus b x root x. So we know that this is basically x1 times x1 over 2. And from the indices, um, indices video for rules and examples, we know that when it's a times for indices, you add the power up together. So it'll be x to the power of 1 plus 1 over 2, which is x to the power of 3 over 2. Or I can put it as like a square root or cube root, like square, like square root cube. But in this case, I'll just put it as uh, to the power of 3 over 2, because it's easier to write and to see. Therefore, the final answer is xy equals um, y equals m x m x 3 over 2 3 over 2 plus a so y equals m x plus c where big y equals x y m equals b big x is x to the power of 3 over 2 and c is a and that's the final answer And that's it for this rules and examples video for linear law. And this might be confusing, so if you have any questions, just show that in your comment section. And I hope you find this use video useful and helpful. And if you did, please give a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And drop any comments or constructive feedback about my channel or videos or website if you have any, and I'll reply to them. And check my social media links in the description, for example, Instagram or LinkedIn. And check my website for all the learning resources or teaching resources or any lesson slides. Or you can type it out in your browser at www.emixeasy.com. And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful. And I'll see you all in the next video, which will be questions only for linear law. Until then, stay safe and happy learning.